All right, I'm back. <clears throat> cool. All right. I think I found the one thing for the shadow real quick. So let me just edit that and see if it works. I don't know though. Let's uh let's try this real quick. Oh. It worked. I don't know why it didn't work last time, but it worked now. And you should totally follow Sheeps, because she's awesome. Just fix this last one real quick and then we're good. Cool, there we go. Oh, do not close that. Okay, cool. That works. That works real well. All right, so um, let's get to the next problem. Neato. Back to it. Yeah, exactly. Excuse me. All right. There we go. I feel good. Water. Nice. So in issue number five, I'm going to skip a bit because I have issue four basically figured out. So in issue number five, I want there to be basically a call to a call to quest as it were. Um, it's not quite room temperature. I've been letting it warm up a bit. So it's still a little cool, but it'll get there. Uh, yeah, in, in issue five, I want there to be a call to quest. Basically, uh, our character is kind of hanging out in a uh, can cantina style bar. And he sort of wants to return to being a regular human. So I need a good way of giving him this sort of hints of something that will do that. So what do you guys think? I mean, there's the obvious like, oh, hey, I overheard you talking there, buddy, and I think I have a thing for you sort of idea, um, which is definitely valid. But there has to be, there should be some other ways as well, right? Um, Cause that, that again seems a little forced to me, like, like kind of like, oh, well that's a coincidence. <laughs> and I don't really want it to be Rye who suggests it because uh, that also feels forced to me. Yeah, and this is definitely a tricky one. I agree, Sheeps. I think this is one of the more tricky ones of the stuff that I need to figure out. And it's okay if we don't come to a conclusion right now, by the way. 
I'm proposing these questions to sort of think about writing and talk about writing more so than anything else. Uh, if we don't come to a, a good answer right away, that's fine. We will, we like, I will continue, I will be continuing working on this project. So like, if I don't come to an answer right now, there'll be an answer later. And it's also very possible that no matter what answer I come to now, I'll need to change later anyway. Um, yeah, like that's an interesting point of like, put him in different company. Yeah, that's intriguing. It kind of like going to Google in, in human form. Yeah. Uh, hey, I heard this thing. Yeah, like if a goth kid wants to be prep, who does the goth go to and start min making? Well, if you're goth, you're already super cool. Why would you want to become prep? such judgment yeah I know Sam I'm a judger it's fine yeah uh, so theoretically speaking you would go hang out with the goth kids uh, if you were trying to be a goth kid you would go hang out with the goth kids if you were a prep kid you would go hang out with the prep kids Right. I think that makes sense to me. But I agree with you in that one of those things of if someone's looking for something, it has a word of getting around. And I also could be getting a little bit lost in this idea of I wanted that call to quest to be very immediate, but maybe I'm being unrealistic. Maybe it shouldn't be very immediate. Maybe that's forcing it too much. Of like, maybe there needs to be a little bit of time in between the sort of devastating realization of he's never gonna be normal again and, and sort of the call to quest of maybe there's a chance. Right? Like give him give him some time to kind of come to a realization or, or come to a a spot emotionally where he wants to change something. Because I feel like if I like do it right away, like say so at the end of issue four, he's in this bar and he's just been told that he can basically never be normal, a normal human again. That at the beginning of issue five would take place like moments later and, and someone would be like, hey, whatever. But maybe what I should do is I should put some like processing time in there of like Matt has to go and, and sort of figure out what's different in a way. 
So maybe he comes back like a few days later and is like, hey, I need you to fix this. I don't know. Yeah, and, and and I'm very much going for that mimicry of the stages of grief in this comic. Where, you know, he... He starts off with this sort of like... A thing happens in issue one, and then issue two, he's feeling overwhelmed and destroyed. And then issue three, he's starting to feel a little bit of... of uh, he starts to... He's like, no, no, I, I need, I need to get my mind off this. I need to do something. And then in issue four, he's feeling anger, and and issue like he, like there are a lot of those elements of of how I'm trying to play this scenario, right? And I agree, like that's exactly what I'm going for. Where I want this normality, this idea of normality, to be his like. To be the driving force behind his character arc. To be the driving force of why he makes decisions. Like he's trying to become normal. I mean grief grief is from loss. It's, it's from any sort of loss. Um, a loved one. Uh, your favorite. Like your favorite top. <laughs> I'm not saying like I'm not saying like you you should be devastated over your favorite top or anything like that, but there is a sense of grief, of nostalgia, of memories, of <clears throat> love in those elements, you know, of uh, losing that that bracelet that your friend gave you in the sixth grade that was kind of the symbol of everything that you did back then, you know, like there's. Grief doesn't have to be life changing, but it can be. <clears throat> you know what I mean? It affects us differently. It affects like anything we care about we can have grief over the loss of. Um, yeah, the ending of friendships. I have definitely felt grief over the end of friendships uh, before. Um, that, that happens. That's a real thing. Um, yeah, well, the loss of a good car, the loss of your first car, um, the car you bought on a shoestring budget when you were in college, like there's so many elements of our lives <clears throat> that come and go that change. Um, and, and change is an important part of a good character driven story. When we talk a lot about film terms and things like that, uh, film, the way that a story is constructed <clears throat> is very much in terms of the status quo. And the status quo is life as we know it. The things that we understand and how they work, where they're supposed to be. And the character of a film, uh, this is talked a little bit in terms of novels and all that stuff too. And I think storytelling applies to everything. So there's, we're going to mix elements of that into what we're doing. But so there's a status quo. And then the inciting incident, the thing that propels the story forward is a change to that status quo. Excuse me. So, in this story, the incident that changes Matt, that gives him the ability to see the other world, 
that's his change in status quo. He is no longer normal. And what that means in terms of this, the this, the the plot is that oftentimes the character seeks a return to the status quo. They seek a return to normalcy. Matt, who's now no longer normal, just wants to be normal again. And in order to do that, he has to confront problems, confront people, find out things, and figure out whose fault it was. He attaches blame, right? Because he didn't choose this. This isn't something that he chose. It's something that happened to him. So he lashes out in grief, in rage, in in fear he never wanted this you're exactly right Sam and I agree sheeps like there is no romantic relationship in this comic there is no uh, love interest. There's no room for it. Love isn't going to make him normal. I didn't want this to be like your run of the mill like Hollywood style movie. That's not to say those are bad. I love a good romance subplot. It can make or break a film sometimes, but it's just, it's, it doesn't feel right in Matt's world. It doesn't feel like it's sol- It would solve his problem. It's not what he's looking for. Right? And maybe, maybe it would make him feel normal. It would regain a sense of balance. But he'd still be confronted with this otherness that's part of the story. So, yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not something I want, you know? <laughs> I just... I just don't feel the spot where it would really fit in this instance. Um, and I'm glad that you're appreciating that sheeps. And I think that I think uh, Andrew expressed that same thought of like that. He liked that as well, that it, it didn't need to have that. Not every story does. So there's certainly that. Um, Yeah, I agree. I agree entirely, Sheeps. There are plenty of awesome romance subplots. There are plenty of awesome romantic movies. They're just, you know, it it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way all of the time. I mean, it's one of those things that that love is such an integral part of who we are as a human being, like emotions and love, uh, things like grief and sadness. Um, you know, that's why songwriters write the types of song they do. They don't write it because a love song sells better than another song or anything like that. If anything, country music has proven that completely untrue. It's that those are fundamental connectedness that we feel with each other. There's something that everyone understands on a certain level. You know what I mean? And I agree. Like, 
there are different types of love. Love can be sweet. It can be passionate. It can destroy you. There's, there's all kinds of different ways to approach that. I didn't say country music was garbage. <laughs> now you just misquote me, Sam. But yeah, some of my favorite, um, some of my favorite things that I've written or things that I've I've seen have been about the destroying power of love. Uh, one of the most personal pieces that I've ever written was a uh, a play, which I think I adapted into a short film. But it's a play about uh, two brothers. One who is a musician and the other who's like an accountant. But like the brother who's a musician is chasing his music so hard that it is literally destroying him. Because he doesn't know how to do anything else. He tried to be without music and he couldn't. It was, it was, he was imploding without it. He's imploding with it. Um, and it's, it's weird and it's sad and it's about this sort of, you know, um, this weird uh, dynamic between art versus commercial art versus uh you know the choices we make to 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 pursue those things and and all that um yeah it's weird and it it's about that sort of concept small time magician <laughs> You're funny, Sam. No, there are no magicians in it. That's not a thing. <laughs> but yeah. So maybe you're right, Sheeps. Maybe... What I need is I need some space. I need to put some space there. Maybe start up issue five like a week later of like he just continually shows up. Hey, Proud, what's going on, man? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I hope that made sense. Of like, yeah, I think there needs to be a space there. A space of like, I don't know. I don't know. then I'm still stuck in this problem of how I want that call to, to quest to happen. But I definitely think that that allows the story a little bit more space to breathe. So it becomes more logical that the call to quest happens. At this time, it's just a matter of how do I get there? So what has Matt spent the week doing? Has he spent it wallowing? Write that down. Oh, hey, Brad. Uh, yeah, so we were talking about uh, issue number five of Strangers. 
Um, Because I've been asking a few questions about uh, things that I wanted to... Logical flaws in the story that I had in my head and and trying to figure figure th- um, process through them. Uh, so wallowing, yes, for sure. Does he go to the bar a lot, like this crazy monster bar? <laughs> Eating cheese. Does he try to fit in? Or does he completely reject this monster world, this crazy other world that he's a part of? Yeah, I think he would have rejected it pretty completely as well. Um, I would consider Matt to be fairly introverted. Uh, he's pretty quiet. He keeps to himself. Part of that's just because people find him weird. I think a lot of it... I Well, actually, if I want to be more specific... I think he used to be extroverted and then his time at the Zona Dam, like the Zona River Dam, uh, made him an introvert. And this current predicament just pushed that further, made him more introverted. Yeah, no, no, for sure. But if he's seeking a return to normalcy proud, then is he trying to fit in with the new crowd that he's been forced to interact with? Or is he trying to fit in with the old crowd who he wants to be a part of? Yeah, and I kind of agree with that, Sheeps. Like, I feel like no matter what choice he makes, he's going to feel out of place. And that's important to know. Let's be honest, no one likes change. I disagree. I think people do like change, but it's only when it's change that they can control. It's the change out of your control that that you don't like. I agree entirely, Sheeps. I agree entirely. That he wants to try and fit in with normal people as much as he can, but but he can't. Sure, Proud, I agree with that. It's, if it, it's, it's only if it's changing their favor. And I agree that most people, when you're talking about change that you control, is change in your favor. Because why would, if it was in your control, why would you change it to something that's not in your favor? For sure. But it's still... I don't think you can blanketly say people don't like change.
Yeah. Okay. Starting to get a good feeling for where I want to go. Yeah. Starting to get a good feeling for it. Yeah. K. K. Wonder if you'd almost start the issue with like a montage of kind of like the week so far. <laughs> That's fair enough, Proud. Uh, the way I look at it is I'm all a bit, well, all about. I am a big fan of personal change. Uh, I try to change myself a lot to be a better version of me. Um, growth, when you think about it, growth is change. It's just the more polite way of putting it. Just like calling someone hungry versus desperate. Hungry is the polite way of saying someone's desperate. It's all a matter of interpretation. It's it's the same thing. Yeah, and I think lashing out is is important. Um Yeah, I agree. I agree with Jeeps. Emotional survival is a thing. Um, people do get into that fight for survival mode a lot, Proud. Uh, especially when you're faced with life-changing events beyond your control. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I know you would. I know you would know that, Proud. But I'm mean, just saying it, it needs to be stated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, and it's weird because Matt kind of lives in my head. Like I, I have a pretty good handle on the way he interacts with things, in my opinion. Because I'm kind of taking him from this one place and bringing him to another. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing how he's changing and adapting to those events as it goes along, uh, in my head. And, and exactly, bro, there is no right way. And I agree entirely. I'm trying to figure out what, what's Matt's way. Um, and more so specifically, I'm trying to figure out how to give him this call to quest. Like, what's the best way to approach him with this call to quest? <laughs> what if someone literally calls him on the phone? What do you mean, Sam? What do you mean by calling him on the phone? Well, like, not like I understand what a phone call is. I meant who would call him and why would they call him and how would that affect him? So 
So Matt spends the majority of issue four looking for the elemental because he blames the elemental and he wants the elemental to ch to fix it. And the realization at the end of issue four is that the elemental can do nothing about it. He feels bad because it sucks, but he can do nothing about it. There's no secret bureau, Sam. You know this. Right? But the realization is not so much an epiphany as a... Like, I don't consider it to be an epiphany so much as it is a... Uh... How do I put it? Like a... It, it's like you've invested all of this energy in this one thing because you want this outcome, this one outcome, and there's no possible way for you to get the outcome you want. So how do you react to that? Yes, Sam, epiphany. I get your joke. Yeah, and I mean, in certain ways, the the elemental is is a mirror. Uh, in other ways, the elemental, like, because it's the elemental's fault for this for this seeing the other world. But the elemental has been imprisoned for like a hundred years and just wants to get out. So he feels bad, but he was willing to do anything he had to do to escape. Sort of thing. Right, I mean, I, I, I guess you're right, Proud. It is an epiphany. I just consider, like, an epiphany as more of an aha moment than a devastating moment. But I suppose it could be both. About the otherness. <laughs> Ahas and darns. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really going to swear in this moment, but. I spelled that wrong, but whatever. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of things. Because now I'm thinking that issue number five is really going to be about <laughs> I said the answer, Brad. Uh, it's he Matt lashes out and tr tries to track down the elemental out of rage, out of blame, like saying, "Like this is your fault. You need to fix this," sort of thing.
And then he does. He finds Rai. And Rai's like, sorry, man. There's nothing I can do. You're screwed. And then he's like, fuck. And he has to deal with it. <laughs> Fair enough, sheeps. Fair enough. Yeah, ex exactly, Proud. That's exactly what I'm describing. That there's so much hate and anger and there's no resolution, you have to look to yourself. Well, I think he hits a certain level of rock bottom in issue number two, but I think we're also going to bring him to a whole other rock bottom in issue number five. Because I think that that issue number five really needs more so than this call to quest. It needs to be about pushing him to that rock bottom of facing his otherness and we can use the call of two quest as kind of like a cliffhanger at the end of issue five to pull you into issue six when he's actively trying to change the fact like to, to restore the status quo, to change things back to the way they were so that he doesn't have to deal with this, all this stuff that he's been forced to deal with. And no, I don't think he blames them after that, but I do think he guilts them into helping him. What's part of him, Proud? What people? I feel like I'm missing an element. Are you asking about are the the strangers beyond the door and all that part of him? Are you asking if being able to see the 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 others the the other world is part of him? Uh. Yeah, the ability to see is part of him. I don't think they're a part of him. All right, sheeps. Have a good sleep. I hope I answered the right questions for your comic. Enjoy your sleep. Yeah. Well, I think he's trying to do all three. Proud. That's the thing. I think he's trying to 
accept what's happened to him. But he also denies it by not interacting with it. And then he's forced to manipulate it so that he can deal with those other things. Yeah, maybe. But in my head, it's coming across as all three. Though, I guess what I'm talking about is more so... Like, you're talking about concrete outcomes. What I'm talking about is that, you know he's trying to accept it but he's actually denying it and through his denial he tries to manipulate things which then leads to acceptance so i mean i just said the same thing you said <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Huh. All right. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom, and it's just about break time, so I'm going to take my break, uh, my second break. Uh, but then I'll be back, and we can continue discussing this. We can try and figure out, uh, or we could try and figure out what the call to quest is, because I still haven't gotten that 100% down. No, 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 no. Like, see, when I specific, well, like, I'm specifically calling the call to quest as like this is not an inciting incident like or uh, a call to action which is different the call to quest is specifically the way of getting him uh on the idea that there is a potion out there that can make him normal again so i have the call to action like that's all there um i'm not worried about that this is good stuff to talk about because it's it, it it's giving me a much concrete better concrete idea of his emotional state as he travels through the issues and where he's getting to um so that stuff's important but that's not actually his call to quest i mean call to quest is probably not even the right term like literally giving him a quest uh, call to action is something different. It is a very story is a storytelling term. It's it's kind of the thing that forces your character to choose if he's going to accept this new status quo or attempt to change it or whatever. We've already given him the call to action. If that makes sense. But yeah. Break time. I'll see you in all about five, seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 